All right, guys, so 10.4 is counting techniques. This goes with our second learning target, determine and use combinations or permutations to count, um, to count the possibilities of real world context problems. Um, so this is where stuff kind of gets a little sticky. In this video, I'm gonna explain to you the best I can permutations and combinations. We are going to be doing um, a lot of examples in class together. Um, and so if you get a little overwhelmed with this video, don't worry about that, okay? If you want some further explanation, you can try um, Atwood's videos or Graf's videos, or even Khan has some good stuff on permutations and combinations if you want a better understanding before you come to class, okay? I know some of you really like to have a firm grasp on what we're doing before you come to class, and then maybe you can just help teach the class because um, I'm kind of learning with you as we go here or reminding myself. Um, so first we're going to get down a definition of permutation and combination. We will add a formula to this later, so um, leave room in your notes or attach a separate sheet of paper. I also don't think that we got combination in your notes, so you'll have to add that. A permutation is an arrangement where choice in the order matters, so that is very important. Okay, If something is chosen once, it cannot be chosen again, and we'll see an example of this in um, this video. <clears throat> combination is an arrangement of choices where order does not matter. Okay, and we'll see another one of these um, as well. well. We'll see some of these. Um, the notation here, um, NPR, is is just kind of how we do the, or how we write these things, where n is the total number of choices and r is the number we're choosing. You'll also see this written as like NPR or you might see it written as P, N, comma, R, and that's actually how our calculators are going to do it. Same thing here, this could be N, C, R, or C, and then parentheses, N, comma, R. N is the number of choices that exist, so it's the number of things that could happen, um, or the number of choices, and then R is the number that we are choosing, okay, which might not make sense, but we'll, we'll go on to a, a problem here. Okay, so the first example is actually neither a combination or a permutation, and we'll talk about this in class, why this is. Um, but suppose you take your little brother out to a fast food restaurant for dinner, okay? The kid's meal allows him to choose between four burgers, three drinks, and two desserts, okay? So we're asked how many different combinations are there? Well, you could choose four different burgers. You could choose... Um, what did it say? Three different drinks and then two different desserts. Okay, so if we actually multiply this out, four times three is going to be 12 times two is going to be 24. So there's 24 different options to do. Okay, and you can see kind of a, a diagram here. There are four different burgers and then from each of those burgers you could choose three different drinks so there's three for each burger. And then for each of those drinks, there's two desserts that you could choose. Okay, this is the person, this is you. Um, because that dot kind of confused me the first time. So this is the burgers, these are the drinks, and these are the desserts. Okay, so you'll see from this tree diagram that we have 24 little dots that we end up with. This is kind of like that heads and tails thing, the different um, possibilities. So this is one way to count. Okay, so you'll see some, some ways that there are some problems in the book where we might need to use t tree diagrams. But let's move on to permutations and combinations. Example B says you are redecorating your room and have five pictures to arrange in a row along one wall. The pictures are labeled A, B, C, D, and E. How many different ways can you arrange the five pictures if you arrange the pictures in random order? What is the probability of any one outcome how many different ways can you arrange any three of the pictures, five pictures along the wall? And if you arrange the pictures in random order, what is the probability that the arrangement will be A, B, C? So we have a lot of different questions here. Let's first talk about um, what this situation is. Well, we're, we're dealing with these five different, or five different pictures. So um, I immediately like to go to does choice matter or does, choice not, or does order matter or does order not matter? Okay, and if you remember in the notes you said once something is chosen, it cannot be chosen again in that sequence. Okay, so if we think about it, and let's just make five different posters here. Let's say I have a red, a green, 
these are my five different paintings, okay? And so I'm going to choose five different, or er, the paintings and put them on the wall, okay? So if I choose this red one, it cannot be chosen again. I've made that. So what I'm getting at here is that order matters. Once I've chosen red, I can't choose it again, okay? And then I might choose blue, and I can't choose it again. I might choose black, and I can't choose it again, and then green, and then yellow, okay? So what goes on here is that we have five options for the first one, okay? We have five paintings to choose from for the first wall hanging. I could put five different dots here, okay? Let's say I do. I choose one, all right? Then for the next wall hanging, I have four options, all right? And then once I put one there, the next wall hanging, I only have three options left. And then once I put one there, the next wall hanging, I have two options left. And once I've chosen which one will go there, for that last wall hanging, I only have one option, okay? And so this doesn't necessarily, the order doesn't necessarily matter here. Um, but what matters is I will always have five choices for the first one, four choices for the next one, three, two, and one. So I'm just going to multiply those choices together, okay? So five times four is 20. 20 times three is 60. 60 times 2 is 120, 120 times 1 is 120, okay? Now, what that is, is that's called 5 factorial, okay? 5 factorial, anything factorial, and an exclamation point is the symbol for factorial. 5 factorial means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, um, 8 factorial would be 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, it's that number times each number lower than it. All right, and you can see on a calculator here, I could put in 5 and then the exclamation mark is factorial, and I get 120. All right, so there are 120 different options. We're going to talk in class that we will actually say that this was, we have five options, and we're going to use P for permutation because order mattered, and we chose five options, okay? And that was five factorial, all right? The formula is actually five factorial over five minus five factorial. And here a side note would be a good to add that zero factorial is one. And we'll get into why in class. All right, so maybe somewhere on your paper, and, and don't worry if you don't understand this, you could write, and maybe put it back in the um, definition. A permutation, the formula for that is n factorial over n minus r factorial. Okay, so the number of things that we have times each number in that sequence divided by the number of things minus the number we want factorial times each number in bold. And we'll see how that works with when we only choose three paintings. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how could we only choose three paintings. All right, um, so the formula for that is then we're going to have 5P3. We have five different paintings. We want to choose three of them. So we're going to write 5 factorial divided by 5 minus 3 factorial. Well, that is 5 factorial over 2 factorial. All right, so that's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, divided by just 2 times 1. And from what we know about division, 1 will cancel, 2 will cancel, and we basically just have 5 times 4 times 3. 
5 times 4 is 20, 20 times 3 is 60. So there are 60 different ways that we can arrange any three of the five pictures along the wall. Okay, And then we're asked, um, if you arrange the pictures in random order, what is the probability that arrangement will be A, B, C? Well, there's one possibility that it's A, B, and C. So there's only one of those. And there are 60 possibilities. So the probability of that happening is 1 60th or one point six percent so point zero one six repeating or one point six percent so not a very good probability that that happens All right and then we skipped a problem or I skipped a problem if you arrange the pictures in a random order what is the probability of any outcome well if you remember we had a hundred and twenty options for the five so it was one in a hundred and twenty um, so if we do the math on that, 1 divided by 120 is 0 .0083, 0 0.0083 repeating. So that's 0.83%. So very unlikely. All right.